na 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 hey 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 goodbye hello everyone i'm dan the man before i get into this very satisfying episode i want to take a minute to address the big brother news that is going around we won't have to wait until next summer to see the 19th season of big brother because cbs has announced it will be this fall Yes, apparently it'll start days after the season ends on September 21st. But before everyone starts celebrating, there is a catch, and for some it's a big one. The all-new season will not be aired on CBS or anywhere else on TV. It'll be airing exclusively on CBS All Access. For anyone who doesn't know, CBS All Access is a streaming service similar to Netflix, but dealing specifically with CBS shows, both past and present. It's also home to the Big Brother Live feeds. So if you want to watch it, not only will you have to pay for it, but you'll have to have the internet with the ability to stream videos. And don't laugh, some people still don't. This is likely for two reasons. For one, like most streaming services, CBS All Access is about to start off an original series exclusive to their channel. In fact, the new Star Trek series, Star Trek Discovery, will be premiering on it in January. Big Brother is a cheap program they can bring to it, which would help bring in viewers. But the bigger reason, I would assume, is that with All Access being the home of the live feeds, they have a lot of people who are subscribed just for that and had intended to cancel once Big Brother was over. With them going almost immediately into a new season, a lot of people who bought it for the live feeds are likely to stay on and hopefully have more time to discover what else the service offers and decide that they like it with, even without Big Brother. Fan reaction has been mixed, to say the least. Some fans are thrilled for a new season with little wait. There will be no fall BB withdrawals this time. But others are less enthusiastic. Some reason you have to pay for it, as the service is $5.99 a month. Others live in an area where there is no high-speed internet, or they simply can't afford high-speed internet. And obviously, short of having a friend with an internet and all access, they're kind of screwed in that situation. I have all access already, and to say I'm underwhelmed with it, aside from the live feeds, is an understatement. They have every episode of Big Brother and Survivor ever, which is cool. But most of their new shows don't go any further back with their archived episodes than what most can get with On Demand in their Cabler Satellite package. And their older shows are not as impressive, and many are already available on Hulu and even Netflix at the moment. But for a new season of Big Brother, I will likely stay on. I'm skeptical given they did season 9 when the spring, due to a writer's strike, and even that short of a gap between seasons made it suffer in my and most other fans' opinions. So I'm questioning how prepared they will be with such a little time between the two seasons. The season's also going to be shorter, at only 10 weeks, so it'll almost surely be a slimmed down season. So I'm not expecting the best season ever, but curiosity alone does have me interested. Some speculate that given it won't be on TV and worried about commercial sponsors, that it'll likely be more aimed for the hardcore fans in a normal season. So they're hopeful some hardcore fan criticism, such as that there are so few older players each season, or that there are too many recruits, will possibly be remedied. But I'm not holding my breath on any of that. I'm not sure I'm going to do any reviews for the new season when it does come up. Despite how simplistic these videos are, and believe me, I know how simplistic they look, it takes a lot more work than some might think. And I committed to do it with the impression I'd get a nine-month break before another season started. So turning around to doing another season is kind of daunting at the moment. But we'll see. Let me know in the comments if you'd like me to review next season this fall. Look at me, thinking people actually comment on my videos. So enough of that. On to the episode. Well, I was partially right. They did put up Bridget with the intent to backdoor, but it was Devon who became the target of said backdoor, not Nicole. Many were upset by that, but I was not one of them. She grates me and did last season as well. She was so proud of herself for Tiffany and Frank being evicted, even though just because what she wanted happened happened, it doesn't mean she made it happen. And she did not have as much to do with it as her and her fans would like to believe. If she had tried to work with them, the three along with Bridget might have been able to start something. But she was so focused on evicting them at all costs, she didn't realize all she was actually doing was helping clear the way so the rest of the house could then vote her out. Devon was a bad game player, and not a very pleasant person to watch either. And I know by the hype, she was a strong woman and got targeted because of it. She cried every time anything didn't go her way, and threw everyone under the bus to save her ass whenever possible. That's not a strong person, that's just someone who takes this game way too personally and has lousy social skills. What truly surprised me this week, though, was Polly offering to go up on the block. That could have backfired, and while this group seems oblivious, I do wonder if he'd stayed up with Bridget, would he have lived to regret it? If he became truly an option to go home, would some of them realize he's been running the game and this might be their only chance to get him out? 
We'll never know now because Polly managed to save himself, but he was cocky to even try that. Polly keeps making boneheaded moves, and the fact they work out doesn't mean that he was smart to make them. If I was playing blackjack and hit on a 19 and was given a 2, it would not mean I made a smart move. It would mean it worked out my way anyway. If Polly keeps making cocky moves he doesn't need, like he has been, it's going to catch up with him sooner or later. So was Devon the right choice? For Michelle and James, not really, because Bridget is still in the game now and off people's radar. So if she wins HOH, Michelle and James are the most likely for her to put up. So it did not benefit them to get rid of an ally, even a volatile one, to keep an enemy who's good at challenges and has reason to go after them if she does end up winning head of household. They knew that, but unfortunately for them, they didn't have the numbers to change the vote. For everyone else, Devon going was a good thing. I know Zakia didn't want her to go, but Zakia was wrong. She may have liked Devon, and Devon did like her, but Day is volatile. She plays too emotionally, stirs up too much trouble, and is too unpredictable. Day had no problem throwing Zia and Michelle under the bus when Paul was talking about putting her up. So she didn't truly have their back, she had her own. Devon was a dangerous player for anyone to deal with because she blew up people's games, could not truly be trusted, and made life difficult. So getting her out was a good move for pretty much everyone, especially the majority of the house. Bridget is dangerous, and she is someone with no real reason to be loyal to anyone and the ability to win ahead of household, but for lack of a better word, keeping her was the lesser evil. And thank God, or whatever deity you believe in, Devon did not have the damn round trip ticket. A lot of people were sure she was going to have it, not that any of them were going to admit how passionately they argued that now. And when they didn't go to a commercial after Michelle's vote to drag out the votes, I wondered if they were using the time to bring Day back in since BB saw everyone pull their tickets, so while the Big Brother players don't know who has it, production definitely does. But I've spent all week hearing people cry and whine already that this twist was clearly to save Devon. It's already given me a headache, so if Devon did have the ticket, even though that isn't actually definitive proof it was fixed that somebody had to have it, it would have been enough proof for most people. And just like Amanda in BB-15, Frankie in BB-16, and Vanessa in BB-17, I'd had to read and listen to endless whining and bitching about the, how the show was designed solely and entirely for Devon to win until she finally was voted out. Sure, someone's going to have that rumor put onto them before too long anyway. It's an annoying trend that started when some idiot with too much time on his hand claimed out of the blue to be from production and that BB-15 was, was designed solely with Amanda as a predetermined winner. After that, that crap comes back around every season. God help us when they finally luck into picking the person who actually does end up winning the game. So while I don't like Devon personally, I'm almost happy she didn't have the ticket because it saved me from headaches that had nothing to do with her. I hope someone like Z, who no one will ever suspect BB would rig to keep around, ends up having the ticket instead. It'll blow everyone's mind. So on to the last item of business, the head of household competition. The show ended before a winner was determined, but as usual, due to the magic of technology, i.e. the live feeds, I know who won. So if you don't want to know who won, stop now. Really, stop now. Last chance. Victor won the head of household. This could be interesting, as Victor is something of a wild card, and Day did her best to stir up trouble by telling him before she left that they were going to evict him on the double eviction. It could be Victor will shake things up, which would be nice since I'm sick of the King Polly show. I got bored with one person running the table of Big Brother 16. A less pleasant person, with less pleasant minions doing the same now, is not what I wanted to happen this season. But I don't think Victor's going to shake it up. For one, frankly, he like pretty much everyone else is not a good player, so I question he'll see what needs to be done to help his game. So he'll likely go along with Polly and the other guy's wishes. Yeah, Day tried to warn him, but she also was just voted out. So while we know what she said is true, from his point of view, an angry and emotional person who constantly stirs up shit gave him a claim based on her relationship with people who she didn't know until too late were going to vote her out. Not the most reliable source from his point of view, so I don't think he's going to put much stock in it. Although the house doesn't know it, but do suspect it given past seasons, the double eviction will be this Thursday, meaning there will be an HOH comp, veto, and eviction next week after whoever goes as a result of Victor's head of household. Victor won't be able to compete since he won the head of household, so if he doesn't win the veto in the double eviction this Thursday, he's very likely going to regret not listening to Devon. So who will Victor put up? Well, he, Paul, and Polly have been talking about getting Z out. Victor wants her out, and I'm sure Polly will do what he can to make it happen. 
It's a dumb move for all of them, but especially for Victor, who gains nothing from getting out of Zakea. She's not gunning for him, has no influence on anyone or anything, and is unlikely to win a head of household. Of all of the people left in the game, she's the biggest waste of an HOH Victor could use. He should let Polly get her out if that's what he wants, which would hurt Polly's game to do so. Not do the guy a favor and get Zakea voted out for him. But Victor's not a good player, and Polly has influence even though he shouldn't. So I think Victor will do exactly that and live to regret it very soon. Not sure who's going to go up. I'm guessing another girl because Victor is broing down with Paul and Polly and to a lesser extent Cody. He might just go the easiest route and throw a Bridget again, but I think that group is thinking Bridget will be useful in the future so they're not going to put her up a third time and piss her off. So given the lack of options, I think Victor will likely put Michelle up as a pawn with Zakay as the actual target. To be honest, Z has zero self-esteem and Polly has been messing with her head good because of it. So she would probably be better off to go to the jury house and get away from him, hopefully to Devon, who will then have time to talk some sense into her. But game-wise, the guys, especially Victor, waste their time getting out an ally, even if it is one who's hard to deal with. Polly and Paul should want James out, since he's the most likely to muck things up and trip up the final two route that Paul and Polly seem headed towards. And Victor should put up Polly and try to shake things up instead of hanging out around until the rest of the house decides it's his turn to go home. But given that this has been the season of the worst gameplay ever, it wouldn't be surprised that they go after Z, so I expect her to go. Although if Z somehow actually pulls off a miracle of Wood's veto, or if they wise up and take her off, I could see James being backdoored, but I'm not betting any money on it. I'll be back next week with my thought on the week's events in the double eviction. I'm Dan the Man, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.